You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more. Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Christopher. Welcome to my New York City apartment. Come on in. Hi, I'm Christopher Sale, and I'm an architect uh, with Gramercy Design, a boutique architecture and interiors firm in the West Village. And this is Connor. Connor is a rescue dog. Um, so he's some type of terrier mix, uh, and he came up from Georgia, and I rescued him from my neighbor, uh, Broadway actress Raisa Katona Bennett. Uh, he was her foster, and I met him upstairs in her apartment and fell in love. So this is my one bedroom apartment. It's about 750 square feet, and I can't wait to show you around. I describe uh, my personal aesthetic as uh, an urban garden shed um, because I love the influence of place uh, wherever it is, um, but I'm also kind of sentimental and I like things that are about my past or memories and pieces that I grew up with, pieces in my family. Um, so it's just a very personal uh, aesthetic that I think is, is uniquely me. Um, and some people have said that I was coastal grandmother aesthetic before it had a name. Um, I like to think that it's kind of my own style, um, but I guess there is some of that influence in there too. So this apartment um, is the only building in the Tudor City Historic District that's a post-war uh, building. Um, I used to live in a pre-war building across the street and absolutely loved the character, um, but didn't love that I sometimes had a little mouse visitor um, and sometimes no water. Um, so the post-war uh, building was the right decision, um, had more space, um, but I wanted to bring some of the character that I loved of the neighborhood and the views of the neighborhood um, over to the new apartment. Um, so when I saw this apartment initially, um, I was living in my first studio that I bought downstairs and I came up to look at an open house and the apartment was completely bare bones. Um, it was all white paint, um, unfinished parquet floors, and I love to cook um, and there was a lot of space, but the kitchen was so tiny. Um, it was the size of a closet and it had a couple appliances in it. Um, but I would rather have an apartment that I could make my own instead of an apartment that somebody had already done an okay renovation on. Um, so I decided to take the plunge and do a renovation in the middle of COVID. Uh, timing was not ideal, um, but it actually ended up working out great. So we're going to get started in the foyer. Um, the foyer is actually one of my favorite things about the apartment because I used to live in a studio apartment and I didn't have a foyer. Um, so it was super exciting to have a space that really set the tone for the apartment. Um, so in here, I wanted to do something that kind of differentiated the space from everything else in the apartment and I had my heart set on using a mural paper in the apartment. And when I started looking into it, my space was just a little too big for a predetermined mural. And it was prohibitively expensive to have an artist develop a, a custom scaled uh, mural for the space. So I decided to try my hand at painting my own. Um, and I knew I wanted it to be a grisaille mural. And one of the things that was unusual about this room is it had no windows, um, but one of my favorite things in the apartment is the view. Um, so I wanted to create the sense of a view in here and also um, remind people of trees and garden that are in the Tudor City Greens outside. So I created this mural in the foyer and the inspiration was really imagining maybe what the East River would have looked like before Manhattan was developed, 
but I also wanted to pay homage to my English roots、uh, with my dad and kind of have this English country、uh, pastoral vibe as a respite from the city.、Um, so I created the mural、uh, actually using sponge painting, which is a total shortcut,、um, but I really like the way that、uh, gives a sense of depth to the space. Um, and sets the tone for the apartment.、Uh, the mural took me probably about a really solid weekend, working probably a three day weekend, working early in the morning until late at night. When I'm working on something, I tend to get kind of engrossed and really dive into the weeds.、Um, and that's what this was. And I kept working on it until I loved it. So, you might be figuring out by now a lot of things in this apartment are by paint.、Um, and it's kind of a cheating method of doing everything, but I wanted to get a certain look. And there's nothing white in the apartment、um, except for accents.、Uh, so, I created this homage to a panel door on the original flat panel 1950s doors、um, and really love this blue color. Um, and kind of set the stage for the color palette in the apartment、uh, and taped out the raised panel myself and painted it.、Um, and you'll see that detail used throughout the apartment. So, this is the first thing that you see when you come in the front door.、Um, I love having a mirror,、um, and I wanted to create a space where I can drop my mail, leave Connor's treats,、uh, but also make the space multifunctional. Um, and kind of have a little bit of a wow moment.、Um, so, right now I have some seasonal color with branches that echo the trees、uh, behind in the mural and kind of bring it to life in 3D.、Um, but this piece is super great.、Um, it's where I keep all of my towels and sheets for the apartment.、Um, and it's tall. I'm tall. I love the height of it.、Uh, and it doubles as a bar when I'm having parties. I had a milestone birthday for my mom that I hosted in the apartment、um, and put a big bucket out here、uh, full of champagne.、Uh, and it's a fun way to welcome guests. So, the foyer is one of the most traditional spaces in the apartment.、Uh, so, I just decided to lean completely into it.、Uh, my good friend, interior designer Garo Kedigan, uptown,、um, used to have this clock in his bathroom. Uh, he's really has a great sense of humor,、um, and he was moving to the Carlisle、uh, and didn't need a clock anymore.、Um, so we had a great time hauling it in an Uber in the middle of July、uh, down to the apartment,、um, but it fits perfectly in this space.、Uh, I had to fur out the wall to build the kitchen. Um, and locate all the electrical guts of the apartment、uh, behind this bulletin board.、Um, so it just had this, this perfect spot for the clock. The other thing that I wanted to do in here to anchor the space、uh, was to center a light fixture in the space、um, and just create a totally different tone、uh, than what the space used to be before. So I recently made a career transition after realizing how much I've enjoyed working on my own space and my friends' spaces、um, and a house for my parents.、Um, so、uh, previously, I did airport uh, interiors um, for uh, large airlines、um, and am now doing residential architecture and interiors. As of four weeks ago, and loving it so far. When I was doing airports,、um, we would design all of the spaces that you see when you fly everything from the concourse、um, to the lounges.、Um, and it was really fun because everything was starting to become、uh, more hospitality focused.、Um, but I've just really enjoyed working on a smaller. Uh, more personal scale as well. My favorite thing about this apartment is that it has multiple rooms coming from a studio,、um, and I also love the neighborhood, and I also love the view of the East River. That's three. We're going from the entryway into the kitchen now, and what's really hard to believe about this kitchen is that it used to end right here and right here. Um, so, I'm standing in 
what was called the kitchen, but really looked like a closet with an oven and a sink and a refrigerator just sitting in the closet. Um, I love to cook. This is not one of those New York apartments where people think it's chic to store cashmere sweaters in their oven. This is a working kitchen. Um, a group of friends and I do a dinner club and we rotate around everyone's apartment. We've been doing it for almost 14 years. And I knew that this kitchen had to be able to hold up to the bar that everybody else has set over time. Um, Dinner Club had definitely outgrown my studio apartment. Um, so I really wanted to expand the kitchen as much as possible. I built out the wall to relocate all of the electrical service into the apartment and expanded the kitchen this way. And then I created this little nook where the kitchen wall had been bumped out. And this is my little coffee station. It actually was such a happy accident. Just to have every inch count in a New York apartment is totally worth um, the space. At first I thought it was a little funky, but I totally love it. The other thing that was really important to me in the kitchen is to have an island that didn't look like another piece of cabinetry. Um, so I got this really great metal and glass island. I love the polished nickel on it. Um, I really wanted to have something that was current and up to date, but also feel like it could have been a period to the apartment and had been updated over time. Um, so I really like the detailing on all of the polished nickel fixtures in the space. I was set on having pendants in the space. Um, another thing that I've always shied away from in my personal design was using black. It was just something that was always very harsh to me. My old apartment was completely gray. Everything about the apartment, cabinetry, ceilings, countertops. Um, but here I really wanted to use black uh, to play up some of the classic accents. Um, when people come over, everybody always stands around the island as people tend to congregate. But this is definitely my kitchen working zone. So I tried to differentiate the space with a rug and wish people would just stay on that side. If you come over, please don't stand on this side. <laughs> I love having open shelves. Some people like having everything enclosed, uh, but for me, it works really great to have a mixture. Um, so these are the pieces that I use every day. I don't have a set of company dishes and then my everyday dishes. Um, I think it's great to just have something that looks great all the time um, and that you can dress up and dress down. Um, and it's just super functional to grab something. Um, I also love having this painting here and bringing some pieces that you traditionally have in a living space into the kitchen. Um, it just makes it feel like a great room and a place where I wanna spend time. The architectural significance of Tudor City um, is really interesting actually. Uh, Tudor City was built uh, initially in 1925 uh, by Fred French um, as a speculative development, um, but it was built as one of the first residential high-rise communities in the world. Um, so it was built during the Garden City movement, uh, where people wanted to have access to garden space and light. Uh, commuting to the suburbs had just become available, um, but Tudor City really came about of why commute when you can live in a garden city in the city. Um, so a lot of people that have lived in New York for a long time actually don't know where Tudor City is or what it is. Even though there's a huge sign on top of one of the buildings that says Tudor City, um, it's right in the middle of everything. Uh, so it's right down the street from Grand Central Station. Uh, it's across the street from the United Nations. Um, but you really feel like you're a world away. Um, it's one little street, three blocks, um, but everybody knows each other. Uh, we all walk our dogs together in the morning. Um, so it's really a great sense of community and it feels more like a small town. And the unique feature are the two gardens, uh, the Tudor City Greens. Um, so I actually sit on the board of directors for Tudor City Greens. 
um, and they really bring the whole neighborhood together. Um, we have events throughout the year, uh, Christmas, Easter, um, Halloween, a Hanukkah, menorah lighting. Um, so everybody in the neighborhood uh, comes together. Um, Halloween's a big deal, it's coming up, and we have over 400 kids trick or treat in the park. Um, so it's just a, a magical place and it's off the beaten path, but that's what I love about it. So we're moving from the kitchen into the dining room. If you've got a great kitchen, you need a great dining space uh, to be able to enjoy everything. Um, so one of my favorite things about this space is this amazing table. Um, the table actually belonged to my friend Michelle. Uh, she's a writer and this was her desk and I helped her do some built-ins for her apartment. Um, she wanted to have more filing space and didn't need the desk anymore. Um, so she said, if you can take it out of the apartment, it's yours. Um, and actually it's so great because this was the side that she worked on and it got this really great patina um, and it's nice and long. It can accommodate a lot of people. Um, I got these benches when I moved up to this apartment from Belgium on Etsy. Um, I fell in love with them and then I saw they were in Belgium and I thought, oh my gosh, this is going to be a million dollars to ship them. And it turned out it wasn't bad at all. Uh, they came and there's two of them and they came at totally different heights. And I was going to cut the high one down. And then my friends actually that are shorter loved sitting on the tall side. So it's their booster seat. And I decided to keep it just like that. Um, and it's great because you can fit a lot of people. Um, you can have a smaller group of people. It's great too because these benches are uh, pretty compact. Um, they're surprisingly comfortable, um, but it's able to circulate around and keep the apartment open. Uh, another thing that anchors the space is this mirror. Um, so there is no window in this part of the apartment, uh, but the apartment is super bright, super sunny. I face south um, and it's really great because you can actually see the window and the living room in the mirror when you walk into the apartment. And then I flanked the mirror with these two sconces. Um, the sconces are actually outdoor lights and I painted them uh, to give them a patina finish. And I was really inspired by the lanterns in Tudor City outside of many of the buildings that have this great kind of similar line, similar patina to them. Um, so I just wanted to bring that flavor inside um, and have a sense of place for Tudor City. So another piece that's worked out great for me is this cabinet. Um, I'm a bit of a collector slash hoarder, and this is great because it encapsulates everything uh, behind glass, so it kind of contains the clutter a bit. Um, this belonged to my friend Kevin. Uh, he was replacing it with a really modern piece. Um, so just like the table is a cast off and I hit the lottery, um, this was another fun Uber experience, uh, loading the cabinet into an Uber and bringing it up here, uh, but it's worked out so great. And then next to the cabinet, I have these really fun pieces. Um, this is a piece that I did when I was in high school. And then this is a piece that my dad did in England in the 70s uh, when he was in a technical drawing class. And this is a piece that he made in preschool, um, but I thought it had a super like modern kind of fun vibe to it. Um, and I liked having a little bit of the family drawing history on this wall. So this piece is a white Prismacolor pencil on black construction paper um, that I did in high school with my amazing art teacher, Mrs. Duddy. Um, big inspiration for me in general. Um, so that was the Guggenheim. I guess I was destined to live in New York. So we're gonna move into the living room. Uh, I decided I wanted to just keep the living room and dining room completely open to one another uh, to have flexible space. Um, I do like to entertain, and this is also my guest room. Uh, that was a big requirement to have a pull-out sofa. Um, so a lot of people use it all the time. A lot of friends moved out of the city in 2020, um, but they still have their crash pad here in the living room. 
So this space, I really wanted to kind of do a little bit of a mashup of all different styles. Um, something that I kept in my mind while I was doing the whole apartment was a kind of imagined history of the people that might have lived here, even though the building was built in the 50s. I wanted it to be kind of an ambiguously 1920s uh, through 1950s bones. Um, and then add in pieces uh, over time that just looked organic and collected. Um, a lot of the upholstered pieces are actually a more mid-century modern, um, but I really wanted to warm up the palette so it didn't look too overtly neutral. I think every space needs one element that is just something that's a little bit of an anomaly or a little bit funky. Um, so this chair, the orange chair was that in a color palette that's otherwise uh, pretty neutral. Um, but the color was the base for the whole apartment. Um, and this amazing painting uh, by Jesse McKay that was a 30th birthday gift from my family of the 59th Street Bridge, uh, which was my old view in my first apartment in Tudor City, um, set the tone with this blue color and the cream color on the ceiling, which I also had seen in the National Gallery uh, uh, in, in England. Um, there was a room that had this amazing paint scheme and I filed it away and knew I had to use it in this apartment uh, just to capture the amazing light that came into the space. The fiddle leaf fig tree has thrived. I was really nervous about it being finicky, but I wanted to bring in the greenery. Um, I painted the pot to look like it's a lead planter um, and it's in a south facing window. Water it twice a week and it's super happy. I bought it at the bodega down the corner um, and it's been loving the space. So on the wall here, I really wanted to mix up a couple different elements of a little bit of high, a little bit of low. Love the dog painting, uh, a print that I bought in Dublin. And then these are a really unique feature because this building is actually built on the tennis courts um, that were part of Tudor City originally. Um, that's why there was this available land. Um, so I wanted to pay homage to that here. Um, then also bringing in a little bit more of an urban feeling piece, a uh, piece that I did in a group project, uh, an architecture school of an art deco building in downtown Cincinnati that was a template for the Empire State Building. So a great tip is don't overlook the museum gift shop. Uh, this is a mobile that I got in the Guggenheim gift shop and I just love it. It brings in kind of the Danish mid-century influence draws the eye up and it's so relaxing to just kind of sit and watch the mobile um, swing around at the end of the day. Kind of looks like the fiddle leaf fig. Um, I just love it. So another thing that you can see really well in this room is the line that runs around the ceiling. Everybody that's worked with me knows that I love a good datum uh, to organize the space and being a post-war building, uh, the beams are all at different heights. The ceiling isn't quite level, um, so I just created this line and organized everything up in the ceiling. Um, the colors change throughout the apartment, um, but I just love the design aesthetic that it gives as well. So we're gonna head to the bedroom in just a second, uh, but first I just wanted to show you the bathroom. Love how the repeating door turned out here as well, and the bathroom definitely had to be renovated. Uh, but I wanted to bring it back to a little bit of just a classic New York uh, pre-war uh, look that looked like maybe it could have always been here. So my favorite room in the apartment is the bedroom. Um, the best thing about this room is that I've set the bed up so it looks directly out the window, uh, which is the view of the East River and it's really great to wake up in the morning um, and see the sun coming up, the blue water, uh, and the ferry bringing everybody over to work. Um, so that was the inspiration for this whole room. You can see this is also the room where Connor loves to hang out. Uh, this is his little spot here on the pillow, so I usually come back at the end of the day 
and there's a little indentation here. Um, and this is his little space he's very possessive of. So everything in this room is kind of things that are uh, personal to me. Um, so I have different pieces of different places that I've lived uh, in Boston, Cincinnati, uh, Philadelphia, where I've spent some time uh, in Pinehurst, North Carolina, where my family lives. Um, this painting, similarly to the painting in the living room, uh, set the tone for a lot of the color story for the, the room. Uh, this blue color um, lines up perfectly with the East River out the window. Um, and I just wanted to bring in the pops of blue here as well. And then a very muted blue on the ceiling that kind of goes with all different weather, whether the sky is bright blue out or a more winter blue sky. Um, it just really connects uh, to the outside while still being uh, warm and cozy. Yeah, it was very intentional to me that the room uh, had a calming effect. Um, I really love kind of a calm uh, color palette um, relating to the river um, and it's super quiet in here, um, but you can still see the city. Um, but I also like to bring in again that feeling of nature. I always have a little plant or two on my desk. Um, so this is also my workspace uh, when I'm doing work on projects. Um, I'm currently working on a house in my spare time uh, for my parents uh, that they're building in North Carolina. Um, so that all happens here. And uh, this is my accountability shelf uh, just to try to keep things organized. Um, having it all out in the open uh, kind of forces you uh, to be tidy and neat, which I'm not always necessarily by nature. So it was always my dream to have a four poster bed. Um, that was one of the, the big important things for me in the space. Um, and I finally had a bedroom where I could fit one. Um, and it kind of provides a structure for the room and separates the working space uh, from the sleeping space. And I love how it looks when you look down the hallway too. The word home to me means someplace that you look forward to going back to um, at the end of every day, uh, home is where Connor is, um, and home is a place to enjoy with family and friends. Thanks for watching. For more homeworthy content, be sure to like and subscribe.